Welcome back to Politics Tonight, and I have with me Michael Achimogo, the former aide of the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, was speaking on corruption allegations. All right, uh, uh, Michael, some people also say you're being used by the ruling party. What do you really hope to achieve with this in the final analysis? When I left uh, Kingsley Mohalu's campaign after his loss in Abiyokuta last year, I publicly announced that I would not be involved in, in political media for 2023. I'm not working for anybody. People need to understand, you know, before they make these allegations that it would have been more profitable for me to even blackmail Atiku by, you know, sending him all of the evidences I have threatening him. After all, his own daughter, Hawa, to whom he owed money and was refusing to pay, had to threaten and blackmail him before he paid. I'm putting that out later tonight. You know, it would have been better for me to do that and collect whatever Atiku had given to me, and then the public would be none the wiser. It would have been much more safer for me and my family even, because by my actions at this moment, my children are not safe. Threats have been made. They have visited my house. My parents are not safe. My siblings are not safe. I knew the implications before I went into this entire thing. You know, um, they really, there's nobody who needed to motivate me to do this. You know, so um, I I continue to say that it is it is. Um, running away from the crux of the matter if we continue to um, talk about these things. Because even if anybody did sponsor me, you know, to come out, the fact still remains that Atiku made this confession. What is the position of the law about this? Is it the opposition party that asks his children to confess that they are going to rip Nigeria dry and you know, steal billions and go and reside abroad like their father does if he wins the presidency. These are, it's, it's, it's very trivial. I, I sometimes I wonder what do we really want? And if we continue to, you know, major in the minor, then many other whistleblowers, people with tangible information would not come out tomorrow and risk their lives like this. I don't expect to come out of this alive. I'm very afraid, but I will carry on until Nigerians come to a point of realization. The goal for me, like I've said, is just two things, basically. There was a personal aspect of my transactions with the articles that I will never deny. I do not want young Nigerians like myself. There's, look around you. There's a lot of young persons who are media aides today who are special advisors, one field or the other. They are being taken for granted. They are not treated with the respect that is their due. A lot of them are unhappy doing the jobs that they do because of the way they, they are treated by the political elite. It's my, my, my goal is that after this event, nobody takes them for granted anymore. Secondly, that Nigerians do not make the mistake of voting for Atiku Abaka for president. It will be suicide mission. If that is the only thing I achieve from this, I'm satisfied and fulfilled. All right. Now, what are those character traits, uh, in your view, that, did not, that do not make Atiku Abubakar entitled to the presidency? Atiku is not trustworthy. His word is not his bond. And so, if a man cannot honor agreements with individuals and groups, how do you trust such a person to honor the social contract that he has with Nigerians. I've spoken with so many Northern elites who are around him, who have told me why they have not, the, they, they, them in the North, the people, the Northern elite have refused to support Atiku's presidency, a candidacy, you know, over the years. They do not trust him. There's also a very vicious cabal around him, according to these people. And I have evidence, you know, of this very senior people in this country, speaking not just to my, to me, but also to Atiku's daughter. I sat down in a meeting in Yola with um, an Adamawa chieftain uh, who addressed me and uh, Hawa Atiku, 
you know, and he stated all of the reasons why you know, the North have refused to support Atiku. Atiku's daughter did not have a word of defense for her father. Also, in my conversation with her about Governor Wike, you know, the crisis between Governor Wike and her father, she brought up the, the, the Fulani issue, you know, and the fact of how wicked her father is behind the facade. You know, she, it was in that conversation that she first mentioned assassination, uh, something I cannot speak about here, you know, and spoke about how they will rip the man into shape and anybody else into shape, you know, who does not tow, you know, their lines. So if I, you've also, I've also read um, some of Atiku's current you know, it's people like Demola Olariwaju, um, Ima, um, I forgot his Ume or so, you know, and others who have in the past affirmed in their own words that Atiku is a sponsor of uh, um, um, political violence in the North. They've att attested to his desperation, you know, and a host of other things. Now, in my dealings with him, in the instructions that he gave to me, I was able to, you know, see what was right and what was wrong. And if there's anything Atiku himself would tell you about me, it is that I would always challenge him, even privately, about those things I felt were wrong for this country, for him to do, you know? And based on all of these things, we will have other people like Governor Wiki, the G5 governors and the rest of them come out, you know, to make very strong statements, you know? And even Atiku's daughter, uh, you know, caught on tape saying, you know, her father believes totally in the power of money to subjugate Nigerians and their political will. The same thing that President Obasanjo had said about him in his book. And so if who, who are common Nigerians to argue against something that a man's own daughter, biological daughter who has lived with him all of her lives, over three decades of her life on earth, is confirming about him, you know? And of course, there's my personal experiences uh, while there, you know? so. Um, in all honesty and with very good conscience and nothing else, Atiku Abaka will be a disaster politically for this country. All right, so in 2022, you bought uh, thousands of copies of The Lion of Jada and set them ablaze. It was said that you did this because Atiku was owing you some money. It is also said that this whole thing is an attempt at revenge. Mr. Michael. You see, Atiku supporters always make mention of the Lion of Jada project as though it is a badge of honor that their principal cannot honor agreement. It's actually an indictment on Atiku because in 2019, he authorized me to write those books, to write that book, you know? And I spent over 40 million dollars publishing Nigeria's most best package book in Dubai. He had even um, mentioned May 29, 2020, you know, after many failed promises, you know, as the date for the launching of that book. It never happened, and we didn't speak about it for two years. After I burned those books, because I needed to move on, and his supporters continued to, you know, bring this thing as a dark cloud over my head. I burned those books because I wanted him to know that I wasn't interested in money for those books. I had better uh, uh, jobs, uh, you know, and better earnings after I had left Article. Article is a man who didn't want me to work for anybody else. Every time I got a job, and I can prove this, every time I got another job, I always, you know, sought his opinion and his, his email to me will always be, Mike, please don't take the job. I always respected him. It's not like he would pay me, you know, what I was supposed to go earn in those places, even though it wasn't going to affect my work with him. He wanted to keep enjoying my skill set for himself alone. But you see, even this talk still, it's a distraction from the core issue. So what if I'm angry? I'm human. A man has made a promise based on his promise and his permission. I've done the project where I spent money, lost friends, old debts that took me three years to pay back. But it's not even just that alone. His daughter with whom I signed a legal contract that she publicly announced still cheated me out of, you know, as her article owes me, um, article support organization owe me money. But I have never reach out to these people to say, look, if you don't pay me my money, I will do this. The, 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 the family put me in a situation where every time I had a need, I had to even literally beg, you know, because out of respect for the man, I never spoke to him with a sense of entitlement, 
But that is still not the bone of contention. The facts still remain, the question still remains, these facts are put out. Are they the truth? If they are the truth, what are the law agencies of law uh, 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 waiting for? What are Nigerians waiting for? The question, this question should be put to Atipu himself because he made this statement by himself. The students said these things by themselves. I am not making any allegations against them. All right. They said these things. Yes, thank you. Now let's talk about the part three of your revelation. Is it really true that the funding of the Atiku Okowa campaign is being done with Delta State funds? Well, a serving um, aide of Governor Okowa said it, not me. I would like to remind you, as I've done several on this program already, that I am not making allegations. I'm merely putting out the things they are saying in house, and so. Um, uh, 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 Prince Olatunji is someone very well known uh, and is close to the, both the governor and to Atiku. And if, if he said that, I believe him. Okay, but it's left for the people of Delta State, you know, to ask these questions of their governor. All right, then. If these issues are not addressed and get ignored by the anti corruption agencies, how will you feel? I feel bad, you know, but I'm a Nigerian. I know I've seen a lot of these things happen where um, people do these things, especially the elite do these things and get away with it. He's like, as always, he's most likely to get away with this one too. But you see, Nigerians should remember something. For decades, the FBI, um, former president, and a whole lot of people have said the same thing about article, but there was no evidence. Uh, you know, but I have provided the first real evidence, confession, if you will, against Article. If Nigeria doesn't, you know, um, seize this moment to begin to show that nobody's above the law, then it's a pity for the country. My job is done. All right, then. Do you also um, really think that the Nigerian voters will be swayed or guided by these revelations voting in the election next month? Yes. I'll tell you uh, why. Every day, um, I'm inundated with calls, even from within the article political structure today. A few hours ago, some directors in ASO have reached out to me saying, look, we are happy about this. We know some of these things too, but lack of courage wouldn't let us come out or speak. I know that just like you heard the, the SSA to Okowa say, you know, he, he used very strong words. He said, Okowa will perish. He said, Oga, that's referring to article, is too desperate. That is somebody who is still well embedded presently in their own campaign structure. In 2019, one of the major reasons Article lost was because of sabotage from within. In 2023, Article will still lose the election. A lot of people are dissatisfied, disillusioned within his camp. You know, there are four Article people saying, look, um, after all the work that we did, it's Tambuwao's boys or Saraki's boys or these boys that have come, you know, to, to, uh, to profit from the work that we have done. They may not be able to come out publicly to say these things, but I know that from in-house already, Atiku has lost the election. And of course, I'm reading comments, I'm seeing uh, this has gone very, very far, like I intended for it to go, you know? And there's a lot of people who are re-examining the, 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 you know, the, their, their um, um, uh, choice, you know, and digging deeper into, uh, you know, Atiku and his family. And I know what they will find out. And I know that if they find out those things, they, they will not be voting for Atiku. Yeah, earlier, you made mention of trying to protect your children. So are you in any way afraid for your family or your life, knowing the kind of society we live in? People have been killed for less. I know the people I'm, I worked with and I'm dealing with. Of course, I'm afraid. I'll be lying to say I'm not afraid. But, well, um, every man must die. It is appointed to every man to die once, and after that judgment, um, if Atiku has me killed, Atiku will still die. He's not living this earth alive. Whatever assassin they used to kill me will still die. And so everybody knows they will die. We just don't know the appointed time and how. 
So it could be now or tomorrow. If it comes, I accept it, you know. But uh, yes, I, I would make, I'm taking measures, you know, to secure myself and family, but I'm not running. All right then, so will you ever agree to a truce with Atiku uh, on this matter? There's no war between me and Atiku. It's nothing personal. It's, um, I have deep respect for him as a person. Atiku himself will tell anybody who cares to listen if he wants to say the truth. That throughout my relationship with him, I always told him that while I, I can support your presidential bid and work hard towards you know, your success, but I, I would rather that you build for yourself a legacy that lives long after you. I did tell him that the, the only thing people are likely to remember of you when you die will be the, the, you know, what Obasanjo has said about you. Why not prove to Nigerians that you are not this person, you know? Uh, but I guess to him, becoming president, you know, on the, uh, based on the pressure from his children and his wives, like he himself affirmed to me in that email, is more important. Um, Atiku is not a very young person. Um, uh, whenever he dies, you know, he wants his children to be, you know, as rich and as powerful as he is. And so sometimes, in a lot of instances in Nigeria, this is how the so-called generational wealth is um, attained, you know. And so just like, um, you know, they are doing in Adamawa State, always, you know, uh, hustling for juicy positions. It's what they intend to do when they get to Asso Rock. But like I said to Nigerians, look, this thing is, it's, it's not even rocket science. This man has 31 biological children. 30 of them are adults. All of those adults want to become multi-billionaires. It will put too much of a strain on the resources of this country. Whether you like me or not, does not negate this fact. And if you like your, your own future, as well as your families, you know, as, as a citizen of this country, this, you, can, you would agree with me that this isn't a luxury you can afford at this time. Now, Mr. Chimugo, do you have any fear about the 2023 election, especially that an article victory could put you in harm's way? Oh, yes, yes, I have that fear. Uh, in fact, one of his supporters asked me on, on my, made a comment on my Twitter handle asking me, what will you do and where will you go when article wins? So I've thought about that. I, I have that fear, but, well, we are here now. We are here. And All this right. is happening. Having worked uh, with uh, Matiku Abubakar and been privy, according to you, to his exposure to corruption. What do you think an article presidency pretends for Nigeria? Ah. If Nigeria ha is said to have institutionalized corruption in the past, an article presidency will make it global. To make it will bring, you know, it will give it wings. We have 30 corrupt children seeking for the same thing to, to you know, dip their hands into uh, national treasury. You look at the people, we call, because you see, to measure the worth of a leader, you have to look at the people around him. Look at the Dino Melayes, look at the Renault Mokris and the rest of them, the entire horde, you know, of corrupt, you know, uh, people who's, who have never really had, um, anything to do other than pillaging uh, resources and patronizing uh, these politicians. It, it, the effect, especially now that we are looking for some sort of economic recovery, will not be good for this nation in any kind of way. You heard, the, you heard them, you heard what the children said, you heard what Atiku himself said. And he did tell me that he wants to retire. He didn't want to run for president this time, the, but the children pressured him. Why do you think they did so? I have a video of Hawa Tiku, you know, who is speaking ill of her brother Adam, who said that, look, my father's political influence will wane after this particular uh, uh, political cycle. And so the time for me to establish myself is now. And so nobody, not even my brother, is going to stand in my way. This is the mentality they are bringing to Asuro, and it's not good for Nigerians. All right, let me ask you this before we go. If you have any opportunity, will you ask uh, or request for special protection from the authorities? 
Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, the only reason it took me this long to speak out is because I was looking for some sort of protection, you know, especially for my children. You know, I did make moves to contact. I tried to, even Governor Wiki in River State, I tried to contact him. I have never spoken with him even up to date. You know, um, I, I, that didn't come through. You know, I tried to reach out to a few other persons. But at the end of the day, look, um, no, no matter, people have been under the protection of government and that still died before, you know. So at the end of the day, um, the only victory I have lies in the hands of the Nigerian people. But yes, I'd expect government. I'm a whistleblower. I've come up with facts that are verifiable. I expect the government to do its duty and give me protection. How? So then, how will you intend, or how do you intend to go about all of this? How do I intend to do what? How do you intend to go about this special protection? That's not for me to decide. If, if, if the government is ready to protect me, um, I'm sure they have an apparatus. Um, they have their ways of doing so. Uh, I'm here. I'm still here. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting to know what will happen. But in the meantime, I'm taking defensive measures. I'm just trying to stay safe with my, my family, uh, you know, until uh, such a moment comes. However, if anything happens to me before then, uh, well, I guess it's good night and goodbye. Yes, I know you said you have tried to contact um, Governor Wiki, but to no avail. Are you still in the process? No, I'm not. All right, so, all right then, Mr. Michael Achimugo, that will be all. Thank you very much for coming on Politics Tonight. Michael Achimugo is the former aide of the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, who spoke about corruption allegations. This was indeed an explicit episode with you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you.